Now let's look at one of our objectives, adding a product to Amazon via its Seller Central interface. After logging into your Seller Central account, you'll be brought to the main home page of Amazon Seller Central. The interface is very simple and can be broken down into four main areas. Along the top, you'll see the main menu bar, starting in the top left hand corner with the inventory option. We should think of the core area of the page as three different parts. Area one in the middle of the screen is all about news and information that Amazon wants to make you aware of. Area two to the left of the screen is all about your account in relation to orders and messages from customers or potential customers. Area three to the right of the screen is all about sales value and financial information. Once you start to make sales with your product, these areas will effectively come alive with information and data for you to review. Make note that in area two, you will find the messages that you will need to respond to within Amazon's 24 hour time frame. So it's always important to keep an eye on your email for messages and log in to answer it when required within that time frame. I will be covering more on this in later modules. Earlier, I mentioned the inventory tab inside the main menu area to the top left hand side. This is what we're going to focus on for this module. There are a number of options from the main menu inventory tab. However, the big four that we will concern ourselves with for now are manage inventory. This area shows us all of our items with their details that have been installed into the Amazon catalog. Next, manage FBA inventory. This section allows us to deal with the inventory we have sitting at Amazon's fulfillment centers, as well as replenishing such inventory. Next, add a product. Obviously, where we are going first, it's no surprise that this is where we install a product into the Amazon catalog. And lastly, manage FBA shipments. This is where we can review the status of any new, old, or in progress inward FBA orders. Let's go straight into adding a product. When we enter the add a product option, we will be greeted with this first steps page. There are two key things that we wanna do here. Always check your barcode to make sure that it's not already inside the system, especially as you move on forward with more and more products. As you may have used the barcode already from one of your other products and simply not remembered to note down the assignment. To do this, simply enter the barcode and click search. This will then go and search the Amazon catalog for matching barcodes. If it finds something, then it's clear that this barcode is already in use and you will have to assign a new one. More often than not, it will return with no matching records and your barcode is good to go. Once you have checked this, it's time to click on create a new product listing and move the process forward. Before moving into the process, it's always good practice to have all the required information collated. This way, as you are installing the product, you do not have to continually go looking for information that Amazon requires. It also removes the possibility that you would not have that information to hand and have to quit the process halfway through. If you do not have the information to hand, then you will not be able to complete the process and it cannot be saved halfway through for another time. So if you don't have it all, don't start. It's important to collate and have all the information before starting. What we require is the SKU, product short title, manufacturer, brand name, barcode, initial pricing, condition and quantity on hand, and the product category. Now the SKU you will have already generated in a previous module. The product short title is really what the product is. For example, a six foot blue pool rake, and you already know this. The manufacturer of the product is you, your company. The brand again has already been created by you previously, and the barcode has already been assigned by you from your list. Your initial price that you wish to sell at is also already known to you. The condition of the product will always be new, and for now, the quantity that you are inserting is always zero to start with. Don't worry if you have ordered 100 or 500 or whatever. For now, it is zero. The actual product dimensions will not be required to install and save the placeholder listing, but you already know them and you will need them very soon. So you may as well have them with the other info. Lastly, as you can see in orange, is the product category. We're gonna cover this now. It is simple, but we must use Amazon system to determine the actual end category where your product fits. So that you'll be asking, where do I find the category information and how do I determine which category my product falls under? Well, as I mentioned, it's really simple. Amazon has a tree style category system, which expands as we move on into each category. America and Europe are similar, but they are not identical. So do not get too hung up 
that one has one type of subcategory and the other has some differences. Follow the same procedure and you will be 100% fine. Firstly, we must find the most relevant primary category. Again, do not worry about selecting the wrong one to start with. You can always go back and reselect before confirming. When we click this, the tree will expand into the next subcategory. Keep expanding until we can expand no more, or in other words, until we have found a final category with no further subcategories of it. Then we select that category. Let's take this info and look at it in practice. My example product is going to be a hot tub jacuzzi liner product. First up from Amazon, we will see this type of screen with many primary categories available. Looking at this list, my product bets fits into garden and outdoors, so I select it. My tree expands, revealing a list of subcategories. Now I can see a subcategory called pools, hot tubs and supplies. This is my most relevant subcategory, so I click on this. Again, this expands to reveal sub-subcategories, and I can now see liners, which is my most relevant sub-subcategory. I can also see that this category has no further expansion or no arrows to the right-hand side. By clicking this category, Amazon realizes that we have come to the end and allows us to select that category. If we need to go back, we simply go back to the area where we want to move to and click a new primary sub or sub-subcategory and go through the same process. From time to time, we may struggle to find the category that we feel is correct. A little tip here is to go to the product that you originally found, that is your competitor, and check down where we found the ASIN and BSR. Many times you will find which end category this product has been listed in. And more importantly, you can also see the tree by which you can find it. Also, if you can't find this information, try another item similar to that style to see if they have the category tree you are looking for. After we have selected the category, we will immediately be brought into the back end of the listing page where we want to insert all the placeholder information that we have already collated. Now, while each category may have slightly different layouts, the vast majority are very similar and it is just a matter of looking around the tabs for the places that we want to concentrate on. We must fill out all of the obligatory fields. Item name is your product short title. Product ID is your barcode. And then you must select from the drop down menu whether it is a UPC or EAN. Manufacturer is simply your company name. And brand name is your brand name that you created. And also look for the offers tab. This is where you insert your sales price as well as the quantity being zero and the condition is new. Also, here you will see the seller SKU area, and although not obligatory, it is important that you insert this before saving because if you do not, Amazon will assign you a SKU which A makes no sense to you, and B is very difficult to change once installed. So make sure you insert your SKU here. Then, where we can see Fulfillment Channel, we want to change this over to I want to dispatch this item myself to the customer if it sells. Now I know what you are thinking. Aren't we using Amazon's FBA program to fulfill? And the answer to that is, of course, a resounding yes. But for now, make it this option. The reason is that if we select Amazon right now, we must go through and send a stock order immediately. And we may not be ready for that right now. We can change this at any stage, but selecting the I want to dispatch myself option for now allows us time to coordinate our movements. 